I have no light to read. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Jayo Radha Madhav Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Ballav Giri Vardhari Jayo Radha Madhav Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Ballav Girivar Dhari Yashodanandana Mrajajana Ranjana Yashodanandana Mrajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tiravan Chari Yamuna Tiravan Chari Jayo Radha Madhav Kunja Bihari Gopi Janna Ballav Giri Vardhari Yashodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tiravan Chari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ramo, Hare Ramo. Ramo Ramo Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ramo, Hare Ramo, Ramo Ramo, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ramo, Hare Ramo, Ramo Ramo, Hare Hare. Jayo Radha, Kala Chanji Radha, Kala Chanji Radhe. Jayo 
जय राधा गोविंद राधा गोविंद राधे loudly for jagannath we are missing him right jayo jagannath jayo jagannath jayo baladeva jayo subhadra jayo jagannath jayo jagannath जयो बल देवा जयो सुभद्रा नितय गौरा हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल नितय गौरा हरि बोल नितय गौर नितय गौरा हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल नितय गौरा हरि बोल जयो जयो प्रभुपाद 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 जयो जयो प्रभुपाद जय प्रभुपाद जयो जयो गुरुदेव 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 जयो जयो गुरुदेव जयो जयो श्री चैतन्य जयो नित्यानंद जय अद्वैत चंद्र जयो गौरा भक्त वृंद जयो जयो श्री चैतन्य जयो नित्यानंद जय अद्वैत चंद्र जयो गौरा भक्त वृंद जयो जयो श्री चैतन्य जयो नित्यानंद जय अद्वैत चंद्र जयो गौरा भक्त वृंद श्री चैतन्य चरितामृत की ओम ज्ञानाति मृंध से ज्ञानाजनाशलाकया चक्षुन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्यामनोभीष्ट स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददाती स्वदाति नमो ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण प्रस्ताय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति स्वामीनिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यशतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैतगराधर शिवास आदि गौरभक्त बृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामो हरे रामो 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 हरे हरे प्रिंग द लोटस फीट ऑफ माई स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर Our dear Most Shri Prabhupada and all the Guru Vargas may I speak few words in the glorification of the Supreme Personality of God at Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is none other than Sri Krishna Himself. For the pleasure of the Vaishnavas and for my very own purification, Vancha Kalpa Taru Bhishma Kripa Sindhu Bhavaja Patita Nam Pavne Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namo Nama. Mukum Karoti Vacha Lam Pangum Langayate Giram Yat Kripa Ta Maham Bande Shri Guru Mdi Na Tarinam Parmananda Madhavam Shri Chaitanya Ishwaram. कथाचन स्मृते युष्क सुकर भवेद विस्मृते विपरीत सैतन्य नमा 
the verses, the most difficult thing becomes easy by remembering Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and the easy things become very difficult if we don't remember him. To that Mahaprabhu, I pay my humble obeisances. So we are in chapter, I can't see anything, my Lord. So we are in Madhya. This is talks between the Lord and Ramananda Rai. We were in 213, I believe. 16? I'll start from 12, okay? So that I have a recap. I have not read anything in between. So please correct me wherever I'm wrong. And before I start, as usual, as you all know, this is a very esoteric, exalted topic, way beyond my realization, understanding. I'm just sitting here and reciting. We all are hearing Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami, Ramananda Rai, and Srila Prabhupada. So please hear from that understanding that I have no realization of this topic, but I do have the desire to understand. So if you all give me the blessing, I'll be able to recite this beautiful, beautiful section that we are going to read today. Kalachanji is so reciprocating. I was talking to my husband, actually, and uh, yesterday, and he was trying to understand how gopis' mood are different than you know, the materialistic, lusty desires, and this is exactly what it is today. So it's an impromptu reading. I just got to know in the morning. But when I went home and just read through, I realized, no, I wanted to read it. So, yeah, uh, I had a question that I had asked uh, Gorang Darshan Prabhu, if you know him, that, you know, the gopis, they came to Krishna when he played the flute. And um, Krishna says, go back. This is not how a social order is. You should not be this way. You should not come to a man. You are married. You have other responsibilities. You know, it was not appropriate. You should not be here. And gopis started fighting back, saying, no, we have to be here. How dare you talk to us like that? You know, you first called us, and then you say, go back, and they start fighting, and Krishna gives up. But when you say Brahman Pratnis, when they came, leaving their husband behind, who were doing yajna for Krishna, but when Krishna asked for the rice, little rice, Krishna's friend came to ask for the rice, and they said, no, 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 this is for yajna, and did not even pay any heed to them, you know. And then Krishna said, go to the Brahman Patnis, they will give. And then they not only just gave, they came behind, you know, those good boys, and then came to meet Krishna and asked that, you know, we want to surrender. And they said, no, you have to go back, and you will be accepted. And they went back. So how do we understand that one side we see gopis didn't go back, and we see the Brahman Patnis went back. How do we know who is, like, one is, like, you know, not listening to Krishna. And one is, like, you know, just surrender to whatever Krishna says, go back, and they went back. How do we understand? Prabhu gave a beautiful, beautiful explanation for it. It's a short one. He said that the gopis, they are not doing it for their self, themselves. They are doing it. They know that Krishna cannot have more fun. You know, Krishna has the topmost fun with the gopis. Gopis are the only one through whom Krishna enjoys the most. And they did not do it for their own self-enjoyment. They did it for Krishna's enjoyment. And this is the mood that we will read from today's section. I hopefully will get through the entire thing. I will read and wherever need, if there is any pause, I can do that. <clears throat> this is 212. Ramananda Rai is still speaking. That's what I believe because I have not read through the previous verses. I did not give the class. I took a break and I was in Bipralamba with Chaitanya Charitamrita. And uh, so I believe it's still Ramadan, Ramananda Rai speaking. Jodha pisho khiro krishne shangam nahi mano Tatha pira dhika jatne kora no shangamo Although the gopis, Srimati Radharani's friends, do not desire to enjoy themselves directly with Krishna, Srimati Radharani makes a great endeavor to induce Krishna to enjoy himself with the gopis. So we, this thing, if you go, go to Brindavan, I don't remember exactly. There is a, you know, there is a small hill where you will see Lalita Saki's pastime with Krishna. And that was completely arranged by Krish, uh, Radharani. Radharani wanted to, like, she got her married, Lalita Saki married to Krishna in a pastime in a leela. And we see that Radharani has, has this mood of, you know, she likes. And I have also heard an explanation where that when Rasa dance was happening, when Krishna took Radharani away, so Radharani was it's apparently showing, you know, sort of a tantrum that, no, I cannot walk. And they say that Radharani also felt kind of a, you know, that, oh, Krishna came with me. But it says that Radharani was actually missing the gopis. 
that you know Krishna left everybody for me and he's just I'm the only one who's enjoying and my gopis are left behind so Krishna you know so she couldn't just take the enjoyment for herself she wanted the gopis also to enjoy and this is the verse that's saying that even if the gopis do not have the desire to enjoy with Krishna but she wants them to enjoy and so Krishna also enjoys next verse this is 213 Nana chole Krishna preri preri shanga mukarai Atma Krishna shanga hoite koti shukha pai Translation by Prabhupada Prabhupada Kija Presenting various pleas for the gopis Srimati Radharani sometimes sends the gopis to Krishna just to enable them to associate with him directly at such times, she enjoys a happiness 10 million times greater than that enjoyed through direct association. So she, she enjoys more when the gopis enjoy with, you know, when she herself enjoys less than what the gopis enjoyed with Krishna. She rejoices so much seeing others. And this we can see in our devotional life also. Like, you know, we just don't want to grab the service just for ourselves. We want to enjoy, but when others are doing it even better, we, you know, we like it so much, like we want everybody to get involved as we, I mean, I have a couple of times mentioned it earlier that our movement is not exclusive, we are inclusive, we want more and more people to, you know, get this joy, get this bliss, and that's what preaching is all about, like it's not just you have it like the yogis. <clears throat> One thing that never attracted me about spiritual life before Krishna consciousness was I felt it very selfish, that you want your Paramatma to get connected to yourself and then you go back and you leave everything behind so it's just for yourself what are you doing for others it's, I always even I mean when I was very young I always used to think I used to hear about the Babaji's and things like that you know the on the Himalaya and I used to think, oh they're selfish people I used to always think but then we see in Krishna consciousness preaching Prabhupada I was hearing a class it is in Prayag Prabhupada was talking about preaching where he went to the extent of saying that preaching is more important than our chanting like giving Krishna consciousness is so very important. So this is the we see that Radharani, of course, it's coming from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement, so it has to reconcile. 214. The transcendental mellow is nourished by that mutual behavior in transcendental love of Godhead when Lord Krishna sees how the gopis have developed pure love for him he becomes very satisfied purport Srimati Radharani and the gopis are not interested in their personal happiness derived from association with Krishna rather they become happy by seeing one another associate with Krishna this is the way their dealings are further nourished by love of Godhead. And seeing this, Krishna is very pleased. So the same topic, that's why I want to really rush through so that I get to the end of this verse. So basically, I've explained this, like we have discussed that how Radharani and Gopis, they want to engage each other, and that's how get, they get the pleasure. And they're not doing it for any sense gratification. And seeing this, Krishna really gets the pleasure out of it. And I was discussing in the beginning that it's Krishna's pleasure that's everything being done. And as we were told, right, like we have to do everything for the pleasure of Krishna and not for our sense gratification. So that's the theme for today, actually. Very nice one. It is to be noted that the natural characteristic of the gopis is to love the Supreme Lord. Their lusty desire is not to be compared to the material, to, to material lust. Nonetheless, because their desires sometimes appear to resemble material lust, their transcendental love for Krishna is sometimes described as lust. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur says that material lust should never be attributed to Krishna, who is full of transcendental knowledge. Material lust cannot be engaged in the service of the Lord, for it is applicable to materialists, not to Krishna, 
only prema or love of godhead is applicable for the satisfaction of krishna prema is full service rendered unto the lord the lust affairs of the gopis actually constitute the topmost love of godhead because the gopis never act for their own personal satisfaction they are simply pleased by engaging other gopis in the service of the lord the gopis derive more transcendental pleasure from indirectly engaging other gopis in the service of krishna than from engaging in his service themselves that is the difference between material lust and love of god it lust applies to that material world and love of god it applies only to krishna very beautiful purport two things that i can think of of course it's an impromptu thought again one thing is our gurus like right? we say that we when the morning we hear that, that the guru engages the devotees you know the disciples into the service of the lord so this is the mood of the guru also it's not that he has got it and he keeps it he wants the others to enjoy so this is one thing i was thinking i don't know what was the other thing oh prema yeah krishna kala uh, i mean prabhupada is mentioning that prema is service right prema means service and that's a beautiful way of putting like when sometimes devotional service when we are doing day to day talking for myself when we do so many other service whether taking pictures or cooking or something it might seem it's just a day to day another activity you know like i do so many things and this is another but prabhupada is putting it, i mean bhakti siddhanta thakur and prabhupada together putting it as prema and if you think that our devotional service is a prema it gives lot of volume to the activity itself i was thinking of when i was reading this verse i was thinking of this verse from canto uh, adi 4165 this is a very popular verse this is chaitanya charitamrita adi 4165 i'll read along with the purport we get a better understanding atmendriya priti vancha tare boli kham krishnendriya priti ichha dhore prem naam the desire to gratify one's own senses is kama lust but the desire to please the senses of lord krishna is prema love the revealed scriptures describe pure love as follows sarvatha dham saratim sati api dham sa karane yad bhava bandhanam you know sa prema parikri kirti parikirtita if there is ample reason for the dissolution of a conjugal relationship and yet such dissolution does not take place such a relationship is intimate love is called such a relationship of intimate love is called pure no i didn't understand when i read it first what does it mean but okay i thought of it it says that you know it's a conjugal love and you have enough re reasons to break apart and you still don't break apart that love is pure it's the intimate relationship which is actually pure so you have everything you know every other reason to not be together and you're still together is called pure love It doesn't say which scripture though the predominated gopis were bound to krishna in such pure love for them there was no question of sexual love based on sense gratification their only engagement in love in life was to see krishna happy in all respects regardless of their own personal interests they dedicated their souls only for the satisfaction of the personality of god at shri krishna there wasn't the slightest tinge of sexual love between the gopis and krishna the author of shri chaitanya charitamrita asserts with authority that sexual love is a matter of personal sense enjoyment all the regulative principles in the vedas pertaining to des to desires for popularity fatherhood wealth and so on are different phases of sense gratification acts of sense gratification may be performed under the cover of public welfare nationalism religion altruism ethical code biblical codes health directives fruitive actions bashfulness tolerance personal comfort liberation from material bondage progress family affection or fear of social ostracism or legal punishment but all these categories are different subdivisions of one substance sense gratification all such goods 
all such good acts are performed basically for one's own sense gratification, for no one can sacrifice his personal interests while discharging this much advertised moral and religious principles. But above all, but above all this is a transcendental stage in which one feels himself to be only an eternal servitor of Krishna, the, absolutely, the absolute personality of Godhead. All acts performed in this sense of servitude are called pure love of God because they are performed for the absolute sense gratification of Sri Krishna. However, any act performed for the purpose of enjoying its fruit or results is an act of sense gratification. Such actions are visible sometimes in gross and sometimes in subtle forms. This is something similar we have read actually earlier, where Prabhupada is saying that anything, if it has a, a tinge of material contamination where you have anything for yourself, it is not bhakti. It's not pure bhakti, basically. Of course, we have Kama Mishra Bhakti, and then Jnana Mishra Bhakti, and all that stuff, but pure bhakti will have no tinge of sense gratification. Moving ahead. Premanaiva, this is for 216. Premanaiva gopi ramanam kama iti agamat pratham iti uddhava iti uddhava dayopietam vanchanti bhagavat priya. Translation. Although the dealings of the gopis with Krishna are on the platform of pure love of Godhead, such dealings are sometimes considered to be lusty. But because they are completely spiritual, Uddhava and all other dear most devotees of the Lord desire to participate in them. This is a quotation from Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu 1 to 285. Translation. Lusty desires are experienced when one is concerned with his own personal sense gratification. The mood of the gopis is not like that. Their only desire is to satisfy the sense of Krishna. So we see the same thing is going on and on and on what we read. Like, you know, if you're, sen if you're doing it for your own sense gratification, that's called lust. If you're doing it for your own sense gratification, that's lust. If you're doing it for Krishna, then that's called love. Kama and Prema. <clears throat> Two hundred and eighteen. Among the gopis, there is not a pinch of desire for sense gratification. Their only desire is to give pleasure to Krishna, and this is why they mingle with him and enjoy with him. So we see that the question I was saying that I asked Gorang Dashan Prabhu, why gopis still considered, you know, topmost, even when they did not listen to Krishna and went back, back after the Rasa dance, because they know nothing but giving enjoyment to Krishna. They, they have nothing in them, you know, for them. It's all they think about is how Krishna can enjoy the best. That's the reason they dress up. That's the reason they do the sulkiness. Like we heard when I was reading one of the section, like it is saying that Radhika, she gets upset, sometimes for a reason and sometimes for no reason. Like there's no reason, she'll just get sad. And we see that, and everything that she and they do is for the pleasure of Krishna because Krishna really likes that mood. And we see this, this episode, and we read it in Krishna book also, 10th Canto, that Krishna enjoyed the mood of Satya Bhama, who was a little fiery. And he tried it with Rukmani, it didn't work. She fainted and all the extra drama that happened. So, you know, Krishna really enjoy this viriyaras with the gopis also, the, you know, chivalry. So, Krishna enjoy this rasa. And in, in, I just wanted to bring back one thing that in the beginning, yeah, it was a couple of verses, I mean, a few verses before, maybe 20, 30, I don't know how many I missed. But that every rasa from, you know, dasya till batsalya, and then comes the madhurya, anything below madhurya, we, Krishna enjoys everything through Ladini Shakti, which is Radharani personified, right? So even to a, 
understand Vatsalya, Krishna needs Ladni Shakti. So it is not separate. He needs that topmost rasa to understand even the lower rasas. I mean, so-called lower rasas, we have heard from Srila Prabhupada's purport that whoever is whichever rasa, they do not want to go to the other rasa. But you know, Madhurya in Parakera is called the topmost. And, and Ladini, Radharani, she needs to be there for Krishna as a rasa, as an energy for him to enjoy all the other rasas, of course, including Madhurya. 2.19 Yate sujata charanam buru hamstaneshu bhitta sane priya dadimahi karkeshu tena tavim atasi tad vyatha vyatha tena kim swet purpa dibhir brahmati dhir bhavat Ayushamna. Translation. All the gopis said, Dear Krishna, we carefully hold your delicate lotus feet upon our hard breasts. When you walk in the forest, your soft lotus feet are pricked by small bits of stones. We fear that this is paining you. This is paining you since you are one since you are our life and soul, our minds are very much disturbed when your lotus feet are pained. This is, this is a quotation from Srimad Bhagavatam 10.31.19. Shei gopi bhabe mrito jaru lobh hoi Bedo dharmo lok tyaji se krishna bhajoy this is a verse to meditate upon, a very beautiful one. I mean, you can introspect on it, go back and read again and try to understand it better. And like even if you haven't understood anything so far, just, you know, please understand this. One who is attracted by that ecstatic love of the gopis does not care about popular opinion or the regulative principles of Vedic life, rather, he completely surrenders unto Krishna and renders service unto him. So this is one step to go back to Krishna, is you know, having this desire and you know, what you say, aspiring and feeling the mood of trying to understand the mood of the gopis. More narration there, wonderful. Raga nuga margetare bhaje jai jan Get sweeter. Translation. If one worships the Lord on the path of spontaneous love and goes to Brindavan, he receives the shelter of Brajendra Nandan, the son of Nanda Maharaj. Purport. In in all, there are 64 items listed for the rendering of service unto Krishna. And these are regulative principles enjoined in the Shastras and given by the spiritual master. One has to serve Krishna according to these regulative principles, but if one develops spontaneous love for Krishna as ex exhibited in the activities of those who live in Brajabhumi, one attains the platform of Raganuga Bhakti. One who has developed this spontaneous love is eligible for elevation to the platform enjoyed by the inhabitants of Brajabhumi. In Brajabhumi, there are no regulative principle set forth for Krishna's service. Rather, everything is carried out in spontaneous natural love for Krishna. There is no question of following the principles of the Vedic system. Such principles are followed within the material, within this material world. And as long as one is on the material platform, he has to execute them. However, spontaneous love of Krishna is transcendental. It may seem that the regulative principles are being violated, but the devotee is on the transcendental platform. Such service is called gunatita or nirguna for it is not contaminated by the three modes of material na nature. So, one thing is that we have to have the desire to get it, is what I understood actually. Even if we don't understand it, 
we have to have the desire. So if we have the desire, we will get it and Krishna will sanction that. Uh, one thing is Prabhupada is mentioning towards the end is such a devotee is called Gunatita. This comes in Bhagavatam, that's Bhagavad Gita. When first Krishna asked about Stita Pragya, he asked for one more. Three times he asked how such person is who is transcendental, who is beyond Varnashram, who is beyond the modes of nature, who is beyond this material, uh, you know, material conditioning. And first is Stita Pragya. I don't remember the second one. You remember, Prabhu? And the third one is Gunatita, where Gunatita, we, when you have transcended the three Gunas, you are beyond the modes of nature. And that's, are you raising hand? So that's the word Prabhupada is saying and also Nirguna. So Arjuna actually asked Krishna how is a Gunatita is and Prabhupada is giving how is Gunatita is who loves Krishna in a spontaneous mood when he goes beyond the material conditioning. And that time the four regulative principle might seem like being violated, but it's not because it's beyond material understanding. And with that, I would like to pause. I don't know if it's time or not. Almost. If you have anything to add or anything to correct, please go ahead. Do we have a mic? Do you have something to say, Prabhu? Too high of a topic to discuss, huh? Thank you. So um, you just mentioned it might seem that uh, the four rags are being worked. So can, can we have some examples so we understand a little? I was thinking, I mean, I don't remember what his name, that Babaji's name, you know. Once, the story goes like that, that Babaji, who had a fish, you can correct me, Prabhu, if you know which story I'm talking about. It's been a while that I have heard this Babaji. This is during Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's time. What is his name? Pretty prominent. But uh, yeah, he had one boy who had the fish in his tokri, in a basket, and he had it in front of this Babaji's house. I don't know, he, I think he felt something, like you know, his, he got a little bewildered seeing the fish, and he got so mad that how I've been serving my God Nitai for so long. I'm not sure if it is God Nitai or God Gadadhar, but he had his deities, and he took them and tied their legs and started dipping them in the water saying, how could you do this to me that, you know, after serving you for so long, I had this desire to have fish. I mean, if not exact desire, but a tinge of something he would have felt where he did not like that, you know, how can I feel like that? And uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur actually told his disciples not to see the Babaji because they will not understand this. So something on, I mean, if you go, a lot of Babajis do a lot of things which we will not understand and that's why, you know, you're saying something? Do you remember that Babaji's name? I will get it. Huh? Bamsi Das Babaji, correct? Yeah, Bamsi Das Babaji. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, Bamsi Das Babaji. And Bhakti Siddhanta said to his disciple, don't go and see him because a lot of people will go on the other side of the, uh, to see him and they will start judging him. And because Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur thought that he was, they were not to the platform where they could understand his transcendental position, so he would stop and say, don't go and see him. So this is what I can immediately think of Mataji. Does that satisfy? I thought of another example of Ramananda Rai himself. Um, when he was helping the, the girls to get ready for their Ramananda dance. Ramananda Rai, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was helping the girls to get ready for their dance, and from an external perspective, you would think, like, this yeah. is a uh, renunciate, and yeah. he's, you know, yeah, doing this. Yeah, yeah. But then mm. the person whom Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sent to take his association, he misunderstood. Like, you know, how can a being in, in a male body can get so much close to female? And then he eventually, by Mahaprabhu's mercy, he could take out the contamination and could really associate with Raya Ramananda. Yeah. Um, I was just wonder, or wanting to hear your thoughts about... Um, we have to have this desire to um, to turn to Krishna at all times. You said something, and I I had it in my mind. I had a question about that in my mind, but I can't remember exactly what you said. But like we have to have this desire to to turn to Krishna at all times. But that desire 
comes and goes. So, um, yeah. have to stay there. Yeah, I guess I, there was more to my question, but I don't remember right now. I Maybe guess. when I answer, you can think of. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, as we read scripture, but uh, one thing we had a, you know, we have. I don't know if I should take her name, but the, we have Srila Prabhupada disciple having, you know, she had come over for dinner and she was saying, you know, this Gopi Bhav and this Manjari Bhav is too much for me. I cannot go on crying and being happy at the same time. I have to be really happy. So I like him in a, you know, Batsalya mood when he reciprocates as a baby and I get to love. I don't know if she would like me to keep name her. She's a very prominent disciple of Srila Prabhupada. It's a few months back she had come and there are people I had one more devotee who was at my home and I asked I sometimes ask very daring question to people and I asked he was worshipping Balgopal and I spoke how do you worship Balgopal but we are into Radha Krishna mood and this Gopi and Manjari and he just looked at me and he looked at his Balgopal he said I will die without him I did not ask another question so but if you see Prabhupada memories I think it is Revati Nandan Prabhu who's saying this is I if I remember it right, it's DVD one, where somebody was asked, what if not everybody is in the same mood? Like, you know, this Mataji said, I don't, I cannot afford to cry and then enjoy at the same time. I need to be really happy. I cannot afford all this crying and feeling so sentimental for Krishna and then still internally be blissful. But Prabhupada said, whether you want to go back to any Vishnu Tattva, Ram, Nara, and anybody, the process is same, that you follow for regulative principle, and chant your 16 rounds and we see this um, like who was he Mukund Dadatta? no who Murari Gupta right who was Hanumanji and uh, Mahaprabhu said you know you chant the name of Krishna and he was feeling little left behind because we also see this in our like some might everybody is saying Krishna Krishna but somebody might be you know yearning for Ram and they might feel left alone that I'm the only one who loves Ram and nobody cares about him and everybody is Krishna Krishna. But we see Murari Gupta was told, you know, you meditate on Krishna and whole night he couldn't sleep to the extent when he felt he would have given up his life, tend to, you know, switch his master. And then in the Mahaprakash Leela, Mahaprabhu showed him he was a Hanumanji. And it was okay for him to worship La Ram, Lord Ram could, have, could be his master. So we see, and that's what Prabhupada is saying, it's okay. Any Vishnu Tattva, we have to follow this. And eventually you will go into you know, spontaneous relationship with your Lordship and um, eventually get your desired goal. But this is again, this is not for, I, I, if I say that you have to have the desire to become a Gopi or Manjari or this ecstasy, I'm sorry, it's not you have to. If you get it, you can desire for it. If you have a desire for it, you pray for it and the desire becomes stronger. Yeah, that's not really my problem. I know where I, I know where I want to go and what like I know what I'm aspiring for. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, um, it's more just in material day to day life, like just be, be, like with the the struggle between material desires and like these higher desires. Sure, like sure I can sometimes reach those levels where I can think of like oh my gosh to be a servant of the you know gopis of Vrindavan. You know, think of it like that, and but um, then there's so many times where I just can't even like bring my mind there. I don't even want to like. I don't know. Sometimes I just shut it out. Even like, I don't. I don't know. I was talking about this in Bhagavad Gita class yesterday with Prabhupada Priya. About personally, sometimes like I don't. I f I'm feeling too many things. Like I'm feeling maybe guilt for um, not turning to Krishna in, in times that I know I should and or you know different like I don't want to chant attentively because if I chant attentively then all these feelings will come and I don't want to have to deal with it and like, like these feelings of like guilt or these feelings of like I'm not I'm not good enough I'll never be worthy or I'll never and these are good feelings like I know these are good feelings to have for Krishna we should but it for me sometimes Sometimes I'll feel them. Sometimes it causes me to just numb out. I'd rather just not think about it. I'll just chant inattentively. Otherwise, I'll cry, and I don't feel like crying right now it's or nice. something. It's nice to cry during chanting. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, they say if you can't cry, then cry that you can't cry, and then it goes on and on. But I don't know. I, I, 
I feel then sometimes some verses, like the second verse that we read, that you know how you get Brajandan and then this mm -hmm. Sharnagati mm -hmm. verse, which says, Sharanga Sharnagati Huibe Jahar Taharo Prathana Shune Shrinanda Kuma. These verses, I would say Vaishnav Bhajan can take you there and keep you there for a very, very long time. Is what my personal experience is. I mean, you may read verses after verses. It's hard sometimes, but if you really want to, you know, look towards that side, which side is crying and being miserable materially <laughs> and spiritually, ultimate bliss, then I would say Vaishnav Bhajan, Narottam Das Thakur Bhajan, especially. And also Bhakti Vinod Thakur, but Narottam Das Thakur. So a lot of in Vrindavan Ramyasthan is amazing one. Like, you know, and if you add, you know, little tiny things like, you do, you like, you see uh, Pratap Rudra when he was, you know, massaging Lord Chaitanya's feet when he was in this garden. And he said that, Tava Kathamrata. If you, when you are serving Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when you are massaging his feet, you can think and you can remind him of Pratap Rudra who sang Tava Kathamrata and melted Mahaprabhu like an ocean and Mahaprabhu hugged him. So you can think of. You know, it's a scripture and action and action and scripture. It's together. And, and the perfect thing is to do meditate on the Vaishnava Bhajan. Narottam Das Thakur. Thank you. I Pratt. feel like that was a prescription. Like, <laughs> I feel like Krishna just spoke through you and prescribed. I don't do it, but yourself. if you need it, you take it. <laughs> Five more minutes. Okay, we can wrap up. Wrap it up. Ancha Kalpataru Vishya Kripa Sindhu Veva Chapatita Nam Pavne Veva Vashna Veva Veva Namo Nama Ananta Koti Vashna Brinda Ki Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai And before you leave, read this verse, okay? And one more thing I was thinking. Read Chaitanya Charitamrita. Read Chaitanya Charitamrita. If that's the mood we want to cultivate, read Chaitanya Charitamrita. There's nothing, I mean, I have heard Chaitanya Bhagavat also, but I would still go for Chaitanya Charitamrita. Okay, this verse, okay? Give me a moment, sorry. This is Antya 12.1. And recite this also. Shruyatam, Shruyatam, Nityam. Repeat. Giyatam, Giyatam, Muda. Chintatam, Chintatam, Bhaktas. Chaitanya, Charitam, Ritam. O devotees, may the transcendental life and characteristics of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu always be heard, chanted, and meditated upon with great happiness. So that's your final prescription. Shila Prabhupada ki, Chaitanya Charita Amrit ki, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami ki, Nitai Gaur Pramanande, Amrita Bhakta Brinda ki, Thank you.